Good morning and welcome to another conversation with Mose. And as always, I pray life is treating you well wherever you are in the world and that you're one day closer to your dreams coming true. And of course, my podcast wouldn't be a podcast without a poem. And I decided once again to share from the late, great, legendary Langston Hughes. And this poem is called Consider Me. Consider me a colored boy. Once 16, once five, once three, once nobody. Now me, before me. Papa, mama, grandpa, grandma. So on back to the original pa. A capital letter there. He being mystery. Consider me colored boy downtown at eight sometimes working late overtime pay to sport away or save or give my sugar for the things she needs my sugar consider her who works too has to don't make enough for all the stuff it takes to live forgive me what i lack black caught in a crack that splits the world in two from China by the way of Arkansas to Lenox Avenue. Consider me on Friday. The eagle flies, Saturday laughter, a bar, a bed. Sunday prayers, syncopate glory. Monday comes to work at eight, late, maybe. Consider me descended also from the mystery. I just love Langston, and I really, really hope you enjoyed that. Just thought I'd choose him again because I feel like he's very appropriate for the subject matter I chose for today. And I'm never going to stop thanking you for encouraging me and all the positive energy you have sent my way with my creative energy and things that you've said to me online, offline. Again, I truly, truly appreciate it. And podcasting is very therapeutic for me. You know, I love, honestly, I know what subjects I'm going to talk about, but I never know what, where it's going to take me. But I have to say it, it really feels good to start my day off with a podcast. When will black men support each other the way black women support each other? And... I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of pushback or a lot of commentary from different places about this particular subject, but it's very personal to me on so many levels. And I've learned to respect women in a different way, black women particularly, and the way they have shared their strength, their, their resources with one another. It, it amazes me. And I'm, I'm totally in awe of their willingness to lift each other up in ways that I wish us as black men were more prone to do that. And first, let me say, I'm not saying black men don't support each other at all. And I'm not saying black women are always just, you know, it's not a contest to see who's, who's greater. I'm not coming from that perspective. But I just think the simplicity of support in so many different ways. I think we always think of money when we think of supporting one another, but sometimes it's encouraging encouragement and sometimes it's wisdom. And it almost piggybacks off of what I was talking about in terms of supporting a creative person, but I'm not coming from that perspective this time. It's more like they have a sisterhood, a connection. They, they fight, but they forgive one another. And they just seem to, and again, they're not perfect. And I'm not coming from that perspective, but they do manage to their mothers, their wives, their single mothers, divorced wives. I mean, they seem to keep on moving and pushing regardless of whatever their challenges may be. But with us as black men, speaking for myself, it just seems like with the challenges I've gone through, I've been more disappointed in my brothers 
because I feel like it's been really challenging to develop friendships and supportive, encouraging from other black men that maybe know the experiences that you've gone through. And it's ironic because one of the reasons I loved living in Atlanta, because I love the the black pride, the camaraderie, the the entrepreneurship that seemed to be growing in Atlanta. But to be honest, all I ever truly felt was the mentality of I got mine, you get yours. And I never really felt like people wanting to give me a helping hand. And to be honest with you, a lot of my, I guess, white counterparts and white friends, I would definitely get support in those areas. And then also black women have been very supportive of my poetry since day one. They have been my customers. I mean, I wish I could say black men have really supported me in, in my endeavors, but honestly, black women have been very supportive. The list is long of women in my life that have, like I said, bought my books, supported my books, shared my books, and my photography as well. And again, I'm not trying to put down us as black men. I think we're great. I think we're awesome. I think we're better than we think that we are. But I think we've been ingrained to compete with one another. And that is an issue for me. But I did want to share a story about a situation, about a uh, friendship that I had years ago when I was, when I first moved to Atlanta. And it was, it's a famous rapper. He's, he's actually, I'm not going to say it doesn't matter who the rapper is, but we were good friends. I guess 86, 88 was when we met, young, 19, 20. But anyway, he became very successful. But, I, but before that, I remember going to different clubs with him and being a part of the uh, audience. And he was always inviting us to come to every time he had a contest or some kind of um, something he was entering talent show. We always went and supported him and rooted him on. He'd always win with his group and just being in his corner. And then when he got his record deal, you know, showing up at the studio um, basically helping him sell whatever he needed, whatever he needed me to do to help promote this record. I was very much didn't mind. I mean, actually, I didn't want to be a musician, but I loved that my friend was getting the accolades that I know he worked so really hard for. But as time went on, I felt like it wasn't reciprocal. And we're not friends to this day. I mean, again, I, I have great memories and I don't I, he's a very talented young man. And I've watched him grow and change over the years. We both have. But I never once felt like he reciprocated the the support. And again, it doesn't matter who the person is. But again, it's just one of those things that they know who they are. And I know who they are. But it's not about, and I would never put another black man down. That's the other thing I would never do in terms of it's, I don't believe in that either. I mean, it, I may have issues with us sometimes. I may get into beefs with people, family, friends, but I don't believe in putting each other down publicly. If I have an issue with you, I'll, I'll definitely take it directly to you. But first, let me say that. But again, this podcast is really about that friendship. And what I mean is that I really poured my heart into wanting this person to be successful. And it was kind of one of many situations where I was disappointed that it wasn't reciprocated. And what I mean is that going that extra mile for me in terms of pouring into me and wanting me to win as well. And I feel like there's a competitiveness that we inherited. And I don't know where that comes from, whether it's in the gym or it's sports, there's nothing wrong with being healthy, a healthy competition, inspiring one another. But what I love about black women, it seems like they're really winning and really, and, you know, outside of Oprah, I mean, I feel like they really encourage each other creatively. They're as far as opportunities and jobs, they tell each other what the next thing is. And they really, whether they're in relationships, whether they're married or single, 
whether they get divorced or if they're heartbroken, they always seem to get back in the game and lift each other up. And me being in my 50s now, I'm not necessarily looking for new friendships, but it's been really difficult networking in this industry, trying to get into, I mean, I'm almost finished with my screenplay and I got my store and I'm podcasting now, but I still feel like I'm the odd man out. And there's nothing like getting support from your brothers that are really like helping you or helping us lift each other up. But one thing I can say, I'll never not lift another brother up. You know, I mean, I, I can't, I won't ever treat anybody the way people have treated me. You know, I mean, I know I have my issues with being supported in so many different ways. And again, the list is long of people that have disappointed me. I won't say people owe me anything. Nobody owes you anything. But I feel like if I'm giving you the support you're looking for, the support that you need, if I'm being a resource for you, then I feel like what's wrong with expecting that back? Like, for example, my books. I have 13 poetry books. Something simple as showing that you're reading it on a plane or reading it on your vacation or just posting uh, one of your favorite poems from my book it doesn't cost any money, not at all. Or just getting online or, you know, just saying, oh, this is something I'm reading right now. I think you might enjoy it, too. I can count on one hand how many men. And, and the ironic thing is I write my books for black men. It's about the black male experience and not just from a gay perspective. It's just the everyday, the racism, the spiritual part. The, I write from an everyday perspective. And I hate the ignorance that people think that because I'm a black gay man, that all I write about is stuff that's gay. And you, you wouldn't say that to Ellen or you wouldn't say that to the, I guess, the, the openly gay people that are creative and that you see them doing all these different things. Why would they limit themselves to just a gay perspective? I mean, they're maybe coming from a human perspective. And again, I have to say black women have been very supportive of me and of my books really since day one. And I guess because I feel like sometimes they look at me like they're getting the inside transparency of a black man from my perspective. And again, I appreciate their honesty. I appreciate their uh, candor with me and the things that I've learned from them. And I guess the biggest thing I love about black women is their resilience. They're, they could get heartbroken in, a, in an instant and still get back to work. They, they fall down, they get back up. And I have to make myself get up sometimes. I have to really push myself. And I wish there was somebody I could call um, outside of my partner and maybe my brother and my dad. I wish there was, I had that circle and tribe of black men that knew my experiences and could help me get to the next level of my career. It's hard doing all the work by yourself. And I want to exchange ideas. I want to, I want to be successful too. And it, it, it doesn't make me angry. It just makes me sad that, and again, it's not a competitive thing. I think we all should be winning. You know, we should all be in successful families, such successful situations, successful entrepreneurs. I don't think it's a one or the other, but I'm very envious of the relationship that black women have with each other. And even I've been watching the Sherry show, Sherry Shepard and the people that she's had on there and how she talks about when she didn't have any money and when she was struggling and all the people that were in her corner that she's had on her show that have been a part of her journey. And to be honest, I've lost contact with a lot of people on my journey, people that were, that kind of fell off, people that used me for personal gain. And again, even that rapper friend that I'm speaking of, it's when every time I see them, every time I hear a song, and to be honest with you, I feel like their music, as talented as they are, is a contradiction to who they portray. Image wise, they have this togetherness, brotherhood, unified unity. They're selling unity, but they they're not they're not walking in unity. And 
And again, it doesn't matter who the person is. It's just, I don't want to be that person that's not who I say I am. I don't want to sell myself as this perfect brother that's not flawed. And, you know, I don't, I'm just living this perfect life because that's, that's not true. But it is hard when, and the, the big, to be really transparent, it's like to be successful. One of my biggest fears is that I don't want to become eccentric. I don't want to be that guy that's um, all my friends are white or they all like not people of color because I can't share those moments with my brothers. I can't feel welcomed because I made it, quote unquote, and because I'm going to be shunned because I sacrificed, I sweated, I cried, I prayed to be successful. And I can't share in that because somebody's going to be envious of me or they feel like I'm, they think I'm better. I'm not having those conversations and I will never apologize for whatever greatness is ahead of me, past and present and future. Because I, I refuse to let myself be put down or made to feel insecure. Because I've been in rooms where black men have put me down, said things, condescending, tried to make me feel inadequate because I wasn't educated as them or I didn't have the same money as them. But to be around black women that have, like I said, encouraged me, um, patted me on the back and said, you know, good job, Mose, or, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And I'm not saying all of my experiences with black women have been great, especially on jobs, but that's a whole nother conversation. But my point is, I'm not competing with anybody. You know, I want us all to win. I want us all to be successful. And like I said, I'll never get online and put people down, regardless of what my relationship with people may be, whether it's uh, personal, friends, romantic. I'm not into putting each, each other down. Now that I'm not going to do. Whether it's my family, if it's people I love and care about, I respect privacy and boundaries you know i would hope that anybody that has an issue with me wouldn't go online and put me down but people can do whatever they want to do but i guess my thing is with this with this particular podcast i just want brothers to support each other more just simple things that really could help us get ahead because it's pretty clear that the country and the state of the world has been really hard on black men and I just turn on the news and I have to admit it's very, very, it's created an anxiety for me to feel like they're trying to kill me. Like that they don't want black men to succeed in any area of life. They are always trying to find something to tear us down and it is hard. And I do miss the camaraderie of again, being supported and just really encouraged because I'm at the stage of my life where I want to talk to other black men that know what I'm going through. I'm tired of talking to people that have no idea what this feels like, what this pain feels like. You know, I, I'm tired of feeling alone in my struggle. And I just want to be able to, you know, lean on somebody's shoulder, cry if I need to, cuss if I need to. And... I do respect that black women can do that with one another. They are resilient. I mean, they go through, for lack of a better word, real shit and raising kids. And I don't know how they do it. I really don't. And the ironic thing is we're doing the same thing, but we feel like we need to be this masculine. It's like we can't be hurt. We can't cry. We can't complain. We, we got to be Superman all the time, but I'm not Superman. I'm not, never been, you know, I fall short. I get tired. I get depressed, but at the same time, I'm always motivated. Always. I'm always motivated to do something great. And I want to come support. I don't care if they're playing sports. I want to come out and support my brothers doing whatever they're doing because they're trying to kill us. They're trying to tear us down, trying to make us believe that we're not worthy of great things. And I will go to my grave believing that I am worthy. And whether it's my nep nephews and nieces, my brother, my sister, I'm going to always encourage people, my godson, to be great. And honestly, I feel like it's generational. I think we are convinced that we're not worthy of certain things, some of us. 
And then the people that do become successful want to put down the people that are not. And I have a big issue with that. You know, some of us don't have a straight path. Some of us, it's, it's bumpy for some of us. It's not easy to get to the other side. And it's a blessing for those who, who did. I mean, I think that's wonderful. I don't think having money is a bad thing. I don't think having education, I don't think any of that's bad. I think it's wonderful for us as a community to be great and to do great things. And we shouldn't be envious of each other. I don't understand where that comes from. I have never ever in my life been envious of people. And I can honestly say that because I don't want what they want. I don't want the same things that other people want. So why would I be envious of that? You know, I don't, I've never been a sports person. So why would I be envious of somebody who's successful in football or basketball? I never wanted to be that. So if a, I've never wanted to be a singer, so why would I be mad at somebody who's being a successful singer? I know what I want to be. And I know, and even if I have other writer friends, poet friends that are doing better than me, I still like the lane I'm in. I'm very comfortable with my lane and where I am. And honestly, the biggest challenge I think I have is I don't ever want to be, I don't ever want to reach a level of success because I had to get over on somebody. I had to manipulate. I had to step over somebody to get ahead. And maybe that's why success is taking longer for me because I'm not willing to sell my soul to, to steal, kill, and destroy anybody to get ahead by any means necessary. You know, I'm not willing to hurt someone to get ahead personally or professionally I just even when I was a kid I just can't bring myself even if I could I don't know I don't want to say blackmail somebody or manipulate somebody into helping me I just would never want success that way I'll always know I got it through a means I just want to be chosen if Oprah calls me if Sherry calls me if anybody calls me to do anything it's because they really wanted me and I don't want to have to manipulate a situation. And I don't want to have to get over on another brother. You know, I, I want to genuinely be successful on my own merit. And I would want that for any brother that I'm working with. And I want to share my money with. I'd rather do business with another African-American man, whether it's uh, advertising or whatever. I would rather choose them first. But again, I don't want to be, I don't want the attitude. I don't want the anger. Um, like I said, the list is long of people I've tried to do business with and tried to um, work with in terms of just working together to get ahead. But I'm not going to, I'm like I said, they know who they are. And again, this is not a, to say that black women are better than us, or but they're winning. They are really winning right now in terms of politics, entertainment. I mean, you name it, they are winning. And I just want us to step up our game and really try to really help one another. And whether it's music, art, sports, there's so many different ways we can support each other where it doesn't have to be any money involved. And, and even if it is money involved, isn't it better that we invest in each other? You know, the hoops that we have to jump through to get loans from quote unquote white people, white establishments. I mean, we have to do a song and dance to, to prove that we're worthy of a loan. Why can't we loan money to each other? Why can't we pour money into each other? You know, and I think that's because I'm, I promise you, God is my witness. I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to pour into my brothers and I don't have to be the guy that you know, somebody have to jump through hoops for. If it's something that I feel is strongly, and of course I want to make money. I want different streams of income. And if I can make money off another person's success and they're making money and we're all working money, making money together, there's nothing wrong with that. And again, I feel like we just need to step up our game. And again, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. I just know that I, I need it to be reciprocated. If I'm supporting you, Support me. And, and again, it doesn't look the same for everybody. It, it doesn't. But I am proud that black women are doing their thing. And they're winning. And I would never be envious of that. But I would love to see us as black men lick our wounds and still support each other. 
and not get caught up in this toxic masculinity that, you know, we look weak because we, you know, I, we, we look weak in certain situations and I, I don't, I don't buy into that. You know, I'm not proving my manhood to another man. I'm a man. I'm a grown man and I'm making man choices. And again, I'm not, it's, it's not about again, putting anybody down, but we have to step up our game. We have to choose to want to help each other. Why can't we all be successful? Why can't we all be um, building villages together, helping one another? And that's really what this is about. This is what, it's what my poetry is about. It's what my life is about. And that being said, of course, you know, I have to talk about my store, All Things Moetic. And if you go to my store, everything, all the images and the pictures that you see represent black life. It's. I mean, no, I don't have a lot of news and a lot of, you know, I, I feel like we're so much more than being naked. And, and I mean, a lot of photographers nowadays want to shoot things just to get the attention. I like shooting black life. You know, maybe it's not uh, popular, but I love black families. I love black culture. I love all things black. And no, it's not selling the way I would like, but I, I do know that. I have a special product that I know that people haven't caught up to yet. And I'm influenced by Langston Hughes and Gordon Parks and James Baldwin. And that's what I love. And I'm comfortable with it. I love the imagery and I love all things moetic, my poetry. I love what I write about and what I represent. And when you go to my store, you're going to get, and it's better to get my stuff now while it's, to be honest with you, this may sound a little arrogant because Mose is a great man. And while it's cheap, while it's cheaper and cause it's going to get more expensive and you need to get in on the ground floor and say, let me get one of Moses images now. And like I said, any image you see in my store, you can get any size, any way, just reach out to me. Let me know. I'm making some changes to the site. So where you can just order prints and also with my podcast, you can support my podcast by being a patron. If you go to my site, you know, we can't do this. I can't do this alone. I can only do so much. So if you want to support my podcast and my, my story, by all means, reach out and um, click on the link and, you know, whatever you want to donate will be great. But I also want to say thank you for listening and this podcast was definitely a little bit longer than normal. And I hope you got something from it. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I really didn't know what I was going to say. And I just wanted to be honest. I just speak from my heart. Um, I'm not in this angry space. I just really wanted to be, I just want us to really look out for each other. And I really believe in us as a people. I think we have inherited a lot of things we didn't ask for. But I can't let that stop me. But anyway, like I said, thank you for listening. And I pray life is treating you well wherever you are in the world. And that you're one day closer to your dreams coming true. Thank you for listening. <laughs>